Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. I've been testing the new iOS 17 here on my iPhone 14 over the last couple of weeks and I've come up with 14 settings you want to change immediately as soon as you upgrade to iOS 17. The updated beta was just launched, so we're now just around the corner from the full launch of iOS 17 and there are some great changes here to go through. So here is the settings you want to change right away. So the very first helpful setting to turn on is auto delete verification codes. You know the number codes that you get here to log into platforms? Yep, well, your iPhone can now auto delete them as soon as the verification code has been used. To turn on this new feature, go into settings and then scroll all the way down to passwords. And then from passwords, click password options. And then you can see this new option here, which is verification codes clean up automatically. So switch that on. And now as soon as you've used the autofill feature for these codes, they'll automatically delete both in your text messages or emails. I think this is a setting that everyone should change since almost everyone deals with verification codes. The next new feature to turn on is the check-in feature, which lets people know that you've arrived safely to a destination. And if touch wood, you don't actually arrive, your phone will alert friends or family. It's a great safety and quality of life feature. To turn this on, go into the message app and then tap the new plus icon here. Uh, the animation and the menu UI has changed. As you can tell, I think it looks beautiful. And then with this pop up here, you scroll down and then click check in. And as you can see, this has already been set up, but I can't send the check in because most people don't have iOS 17 yet. But there is a very important setting that I think you should change here. And if you're cautious of privacy, this is important. So go into settings and then go into messages. And then from messages, scroll down to data. And you can see here that you have the option of limited or full. And now I would change this to limited, which doesn't share the exact routes you've taken and more device info. Um, if it's something that you do wanna send, we'll then click full. But if you're concerned about privacy, I do recommend changing it to limited. Here is another big one. We finally have interactive widgets in iOS 17, a feature that was unique to Android, but hey, better late than never. So now you can see that with some widgets, you can literally click the reminder and tick it off right in the widget on the home screen. So you don't need to do much here to enable this. All you need to do is add the widgets. So let's say, uh, let's drag in this. Um, and now you can literally play the music directly from the home screen. That's just an example of the stuff that you can do. Obviously, there's not much support for this at the moment, uh, but I can't wait to see what the developers do. And yeah, from my testing, it seems to make a minimal difference to battery life, so that's a plus as well. Let's move on to some cool new features with the camera app. If you're serious about mobile photography, I'd highly recommend turning on the new camera leveling feature. Uh, it's kind of hard to show you, but now if I'm to take a photo and it's slightly off center, there is this sort of uh, leveling feature that pops up for like a couple seconds and shows you how to get that perfectly leveled shot. This seems like a feature that's off by default on iOS 17, uh, at least in the beta version. So what I do is go into settings and then in the camera in the settings, go down to composition and you can see this new level function. So I would turn that on. I would recommend turning all of these on. Uh, these just give you better control. As you can see for the grid element and leveling features, this will just give you better control with the iPhone camera. While we're here in the camera, there is another iOS 17 upgrade that is one of my favorites and it's visual lookup. They've upgraded this to become even better. And let's say, for example, I took a photo of this dog and I'm curious about uh, what breed it is. You can now literally just hold it and then click lookup and it will literally tell you the breed of the dog and it's a whippet. So now that it's tagged, you can see that there is a little dog icon, lookup icon here, lookup whippet. Um, and yeah, there's a lot that you can do with this feature. You can literally go uh, take photos or videos of laundry symbols and then decipher them. You can even get recipes based on food pictures. But yeah, this is amazing and this feature should be on by default. So give it a go. It's actually been really useful over the last couple of weeks.
Before we move on to the next few settings, I want to share a really useful app with you and it's Pulseway, their today's video sponsor. So if you're tired of constant monitoring and managing your IT infrastructure, you want to try Pulseway. It's the ultimate remote monitoring and management solution. With Pulseway, you can gain real-time insights into the health of your systems, servers, and networks right from your smartphone or tablet. So don't let IT problems hold you back. Pulseway frees up your systems by fixing issues and deploying updates on the go, no matter where you are. So experience the power and freedom of Pulseway. You can try it for free with the link in the description box. So moving on, for those of you who use Safari in iOS 17, you now get a really useful profiles feature here to better organize your tabs and bookmarks depending on what you're trying to do. So to turn this on, go into settings and then scroll down to Safari. And then under Safari, scroll down again and click under profiles, new profile. So depending on what you want to achieve, I typically recommend to uh, set up one for work, play, and sometimes even for like browsing or researching. So let's say I am looking for new tennis shoes. I will type in tennis shoes and then click the icon that you wanna pick. Let's just use a smiley face and then color code it. And you can literally choose uh, what new tabs open on and then your favorites page. So you can see here now that tennis shoes pops up and this is just a really easy way to group your tabs and get organized rather than having hundreds of tabs open like I do. So yeah, this is a great option to have on. Another clutch new Safari feature is family passwords. It's designed to help safely share passwords with other people. So go into settings and then go into passwords here. So in here, you'll now see a new option. Uh, it's called share passwords and pass keys. Click get started and set it up and you get prompted to add people into this group and then add a group name. And then from there, once you have it all set up, you can now basically share passwords and logins without needing to share your password. Plus others in that group can also add their own logins and passwords. So the passwords are all stored in the iCloud keychain and are end-to-end -end encrypted. So they're secure for the most part. And it makes for a great free alternative to password sharing apps like 1Password and LastPass, for example. So let's continue talking about safety and security because this is quite important. And the next feature that you should check out is Safety Check. It is a pre existing feature that's definitely worth turning on and checking out. So go to settings and then scroll down to privacy and security here. And then safety check right at the bottom. And from here, what this is going to do is you should click manage sharing and access uh, right here. And it's a really easy way to review all your privacy permissions in one spot. It's sort of like taking stock of all your privacy and safety settings. And it's worth doing here and there. If you haven't ever done it, definitely recommend you check this out and just see where your safety and security features are at. The next one in the same privacy settings, here's something you should definitely turn off and it's location usage. So scroll all the way back up and go into location services. Don't turn this off because this is still important for a lot of different apps. But if you scroll down to system services here, there is a lot of things here that you can turn off and this will both save uh, your privacy and also your battery. So I would go through this and turn off things that aren't necessarily important to you. For example, maybe you don't use a compass that I would turn that off. Um, scroll down, you know, if you don't use HomeKit, I'd turn that off location-based suggestions. And one of the biggest ones to turn off is significant locations. This keeps a complete track of everywhere you go to give you uh, recommendations. And I don't think it's necessarily that important. So again, if you're big on privacy and you're trying to save battery, I would turn off significant locations. Sensitive content warning is a new iOS 17 feature that protects you from inappropriate content received on messages, airdrop, and more. So if you prefer to avoid confronting content, you can now turn on this new feature through settings, going back into privacy and security here, and then scroll down to the new sensitive content um, warning. So right here, and you can now turn this on. So now if you receive inappropriate content like this, you'll get a warning. And if you still wanna see it, you can just 
click show uh, and then you can see it. You can also press the warning symbol here to block the contact and then there's even a thoughtful ways to get help button which will take you to links where you can get mental support. Uh, this is stuff that I love to see from Apple. Next, if you wanna get rid of the annoying capture forms like this, Auto verification is a setting you'll want to turn on that can help you bypass things like this. So to turn this on, go into settings and then go into your Apple ID. And then in your Apple ID, click sign in and security. And then all the way at the bottom, there is an advanced button here, automatic verification, turn that on. This feature has improved since iOS 16 and supports more websites now. I do not miss trying to figure out if the stupid traffic light fits into the capture box. So yeah, this def one definitely comes in clutch. In the Maps app in iOS 17, you can now download offline maps. So it's perfect for when you go traveling. So to download a map, click on your avatar, and then you can see offline maps here. You can download a new map, and then you can just click the location that you want, and then zoom in on the exact section that you want to download. Let's go look into Manhattan and you can click download. It also gives you the estimated size of the map. But once you click download, it will download that map for you. So now in offline maps, I have made sure that it only downloads over Wi-Fi and automatic updates are on. Also, I would turn on only use offline maps. This helps save, again, battery and data. Also, while we're here, a fun fact, if you own an electric vehicle, Maps now shows charging stations with real-time availability. So we can find the station with a free charger, which is really useful. If I click into this one, you can see that the pricing is paid, there's 10 chargers available, and you can also see the type of charger available. So that's definitely a nifty feature added into Maps. If you appreciate emojis and stickers, you're going to like the new animated stickers. So to create these, bring up the image that you want to uh, use and then long press the subject and then you can see this new option click add sticker and then from here it's just added the sticker and then if you hold this as well you can add effect so with the add effects you can add outlines you can add uh, different effects um, you can even make it animated as well uh, let's just go with the outline and then if I go into the messages now you can literally react now with stickers and you can save them in this box here. It's fun, neat addition. You can also animate the sticker too if you have a live photo. So the last iOS 17 setting to change is to turn on live voicemail and silence unknown callers. So as you can see, when you turn it on, you get a live feed of when someone goes to your voicemail box and you can still choose to pick up the phone call or you can just see that it's a spam call and just ignore it. Unfortunately, this is only available in the US and Canada. So if you are in those regions, I would go into settings and under calls, if you're again in the US or Canada, it will appear here as live voicemail and then you just need to toggle it on. While you're also here, make sure to also toggle on silence unknown callers. Uh, this is going to help if you don't want, you know, those unknown numbers bothering you. So I'm going to turn that on. If you made it to the very end of this video, guys, drop the code word comment emoji and I'll give it a like. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate if you drop a like and be sure to subscribe for more. And I'll also drop a uh, link to the wallpaper. I usually get some comments about it. So it'll be in the description box below. And also if you have a Mac, I'll share on screen here some videos to some setting changes and also favorite Mac apps that you should check out. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.